Challenge Success, we believe homework should focus on quality, connection to content, and engagement. Working with Challenge Success, two member schools bravely explored homework. Both schools recognized the need to work with a multi-stakeholder team. With administrative support, teachers are better able to explore what works best for their course, content, and most importantly, their students. The administration and faculty at Jane Lathrop Stanford Middle School in Palo Alto took a close look at their homework practices and drafted homework guidelines to encourage meaningful homework. The conversation about homework began three years prior to revisiting the policy. There was a lot of academic stress in the community. In response to all stakeholders, the administration decided to investigate homework. I did a lot, again, I mean, continued to do a lot of listening. Um, I did a lot of coffees, and I did, um, I was invited to um, what they call parent network meetings. Um, and at multiple meetings, a lot of parents brought up homework. And so when it shows up one time, you're like, okay, I'll look into it. When it shows up another time, you start to think, huh, I wonder what this is about. And then it shows up another time and you're like, okay, I got to get on this. Like, where, where are we? Um, and what is, what is it exactly? Like, can I pinpoint what it is? When you say you have concerns around homework, what are they? And what, so I started then having conversations um, a little bit more intentionally, obviously. I mean, it, and what came out is n a couple things. One, that there's a lot of stress and tension in the community in general, and there's a little bit of a reverting back to we need more time for kids to be kids, which I was psyched mm -hmm. about because that's what I believe anyway. Um, and a little bit of uh, multi-direction in the community around you know, fix everything at once, and that just doesn't happen. So I had to figure out where do we go with this, and what do we do with it, and how do we do it. So um, my first thought was, well, how do we develop skills of resiliency within our students? So that when they, you know, middle school is a time when you can make mistakes, but if you don't learn how to come back from those mistakes, then I'm really not helping you anyway. So how do we build and develop some resiliency skills? In order to build and develop some resiliency skills, I think you need to have an understanding of uh, what it's like to be a kid in, in the community today. The school implemented the Student for a Day program. The idea was to share with faculty the experience of being a student by offering them the opportunity to shadow a student's schedule. Teachers were matched with students to shadow for a day, which means one teacher followed one student to all of their classes, including going to lockers and writing down all the homework assignments. The substitutes were paid for by the school. Twenty teachers volunteered and participated in the program. Teachers who participated were asked to fill in a confidential reflection form and then asked to take part in a panel during a faculty meeting. In looking through the debrief forms and through talking with participating teachers, teachers who were observed, and in sitting through the faculty meeting, the administration and faculty noticed a trend that paralleled the parental concerns with homework. In the debrief piece of it, they could think back to, were they prepared to complete their homework? Did they have a lot of homework? What was their experience like? Were the directions clear? You know, all of these pieces that are related to homework. So Instead of drafting a new policy, the school came up with guidelines that included reflection on the purpose of homework, daily time suggestions, and responsibilities for students, teachers, and parents. The Student for a Day project created a willingness for the faculty to participate in a dialogue about homework. The administration responded with a professional development workshop and parent education presentation with challenge success. In the faculty workshop, we asked teachers to assess the merits of real homework assignments. Each teacher was also asked to experiment or pilot a new way of doing homework. As a result, teachers felt supported and encouraged to try new things. Elizabeth Fee, a teacher at the school, has found that ungraded homework helps to promote engagement and practice without unnecessary stress. Um, a lot of just conversation about, wow, it's a really overwhelming day and they have so many different things that they're trying to do and it was exhausting for the teachers to be the student for the day and trying to follow it and then following all the social dynamics of what was happening with the kids in the classrooms and um, you know, just getting that feedback from a teacher perspective is so useful. So we have total freedom. We can do kind of whatever we want, um, and I think that was part of what this project was about, is sort of helping us understand and make really good decisions about what we're doing with homework. But we can try things. We can experiment. We, um, in our eighth grade classroom, I'm a math teacher, and um, 
we usually don't grade homework. You know, because we don't grade it, we still go around and check. So um, my policy is I put a stamp on our paper every day. I do keep track of whether they did it or didn't do it. If they don't do it three days in a row, then I'll send a note home to the parent saying your child's not doing their homework. This is an important component of the class because they need that practice time. I've had a few students in the past that do fine in the class without doing their homework. Not many. Very, very, very small number. And that's, you know, we work that. We just watch. Okay, if you can go through this chapter and you're fine, then we can try the next chapter. And if it starts to change, then we'll start doing your homework. At Woodside Priory, a middle and high school in the Portola Valley, the administration also noticed a trend of heavy homework loads without the desired student engagement. The head of the upper school opened up the dialogue and encouraged faculty to play around with their courses to see what worked best for their own situations. Faculty are regularly asked to report back at meetings with success stories and challenges in an ongoing exploration of what makes homework work. And the Priory students have noticed these changes. A lot of teachers don't give a lot of assessments just because they don't like taking up class time with taking tests, which I think is interesting. Um, so that's good. Um, a couple of my classes, like my English class, is really tiny this year, so we've been doing a lot more group work than you know normally, um, which is also helpful because you you know a lot of it's like discussion based. Um, which is more helpful than like sitting at home and like trying to fill out a worksheet by yourself. I mean, I've definitely, I, I think the one good thing about the Priory does is it definitely doesn't assign busy work. Like it's not just like here, do a worksheet just to do a worksheet. You know, like I don't feel like teachers ever do that. If it's not necessary, then they'll either have it do you in class, like as a group project and, um, or not have you do it, which I appreciate. Teachers at Woodside Priory have tried self-graded assignments, revise and resubmit assignments, homework-free units, classes, nights, weekends, and breaks, optional homework, homework diaries, and flip teaching to see how long it takes kids to complete homework. Just like I think many of the other teachers here, I'm trying to get a better understanding of um, how long it takes the, our kids to do the homework. So uh, from time to time, I'll have uh, the kids do homework uh, in class um, so I can see um, not only how long it takes them to do the homework, I do try to predict how long it takes, but you never know unless you have the kid there. Um, but also um, uh, how they're going about doing their homework. Um, so in the history class, um, a lot of the homework at night um, is reading, and I'll expect the, the kid to come in um, and uh, have a general understanding of uh, the, the subject. Um, but um, you know, are they reading without distraction? Are they taking notes uh, while they're reading? Um, are they reading off the screen? Are they reading off a, uh, a textbook? Are they marking up the book? Um, things like that. So it helps me to get a better understanding of how kids do homework and how I could, I can better help them uh, with that. In response to what he learned from his homework experiment, this teacher also decided to try a course without any homework. I've uh, made a no homework class. I wanted the class to be a social learning class. I wanted them, um, I want to create a kind of learning community um, uh, and so most of the classes are um, structured like workshops. Um, they're doing research in class. Um, they're posting their research uh, up on a Google Doc. The impression I've got is that um, yeah, they come up with some great stuff when they, when they learn together. Um, they're able to bounce ideas off each other. They get different perspectives. Uh, it's a really creative environment. They get feedback on their writing. Uh, their motivation is up. Um, and so I've been really happy with the quality of work. Um, and I can see it all happening in the classroom. Um, I can be on hand to answer their questions if they have them. Uh, so I've been happy, happy with that. Here's what we recommend for teachers. Make sure homework is developmentally appropriate differentiated, and able to be done independently. Teachers should strive for the just right challenge for each student and should ensure that homework is doable without the need for outside help from a parent, peer, or tutor. We encourage teachers to reflect on the purpose of homework and to tie it back to the enduring understandings or the big ideas of a given unit and to make this clear to the students. When students perceive homework as busy work, meaningless, and of little value to the teacher, they may be less engaged Try offering student choice and student voice in homework assignments. Use homework specifically for tasks that cannot be performed in class. For instance, have students read a book outside of class, interview a community member, or collect backyard samples for a science experiment. Predict the amount of time homework may take. This isn't an easy task, but teachers might consider tracking actual homework task time minus time spent taking breaks or being distracted 
by having students do the assigned homework in class for a week, asking students and parents to keep homework diaries of actual time spent on work at home, or suggesting that students stop after a certain amount of time without penalty. Determine whether homework should count towards student grades, and if so, to what extent. Teachers should consider whether students will receive a certain amount of points for just completing the homework, or whether they receive points for completing it correctly. Some teachers offer students opportunities to redo their homework or have a lenient or late policy. Teachers might consider handing out homework packets that can be completed over time or homework-free passes for students to use when the workload or home obligations are particularly heavy. And here's what we recommend for parents. Parents should act as cheerleaders and supporters, not homework police. Ideally, the student should be able to do the homework alone without help from parents. Parents should provide necessary supplies and show an active interest in the content the student is learning while allowing the teachers to intervene if the student fails to do the homework correctly or regularly. When scheduling after-school activities, keep in mind your child's homework load. Work with your child to determine a healthy schedule of activities that will allow time to complete homework, work on projects, and study for tests while still getting adequate sleep and time for play. Recognize that children learn in different ways and have different work styles. Discuss with your child the working conditions that will lead to the best homework outcomes. Let children make mistakes and experience successful failures. Recognize that a missed or poorly done homework assignment every now and then is not going to hurt your child in the long run. When parents regularly deliver forgotten assignments to school or step in to rescue a child at the last minute, they may be denying the child the opportunity to develop resilience and fortitude.